Phil Mackey. That's Judd Zolgad. We've got Declan Goff producing here today. And uh, gentlemen, I the question for today's show, I don't want it to come off as flippant, but I think it's timely. And I don't think we should shy away from the timeliness of this question off of the back of everything that's happened in the state of Minnesota and around the country the last seven days. So it's kind of a two-part question. Should the Vikings of all teams consider signing Colin Kaepernick to be their backup quarterback? And then by extension, question number two, would Colin Kaepernick be more or less accepted now than, say, six months ago or three or four years ago? I think he would be more accepted now, even if he wasn't really, that that would be the face that people would put on. I think the Vikings should sign him if he would help the Vikings. I don't think he should be signed just uh, because of what has transpired. That being said, I will give you this. I think the National Football League should call Colin Kaepernick today and say, we're going to employ you as a voice for what we ignored last time. He might actually say no to that. He might, but if I'm the National Football League, I extend I extend that invitation to him. Because I think more, because if he becomes the backup QB to Cousins here, you know exactly why it's being done, right? And and I don't know if that is, if that becomes the greatest platform, because it's completely different if the Vikings or a team truly believes, hey, he can play. And, and he has clearly been ostracized from the league because of what he said. He, but even if he says no, I think the greatest thing the National Football League could do, and, and if he says no, find somebody else. But I think what sports leagues, because they make billions of dollars, e even with the pandemic, they're going to make billions of dollars, mm -hmm. Phil Mackey. I think the greatest thing that that football and basketball and baseball, hockey perhaps too, could do is to say, you know what, what we ignored, what caused people to kneel, because we got so fixated on that, right? National Anthem is being disrespected. I don't care why you don't do that. Okay. We now have an opportunity to go back, and I'm not saying make it right, but we now have an opportunity to go back and admit our mistake and start some type of uh, conversation, start empower people to actually talk about here's why that happened. So I don't think it necessarily becomes Kaepernick being back in the league as a Viking, but I do think the message that that we got so afraid of, and there were threats made to Roger Goodell and the people at the National Football League that right. scared them off. I think they need to turn around now and say, you know what? We were wrong to be scared off. We're going to embrace that message now. And if you don't like it, it's going to cost us. We don't care at this point. So um, just from a football perspective, as it pertains to the Minnesota Vikings, answer me this, both you guys. If you gave Kaepernick some time to you know, play a couple of preseason games, like the, the dude just hasn't played in games in years. So that's, that's part of the issue. The rust factor is definitely in play. His last regular season football game was in 2016. So we're talking about a four-year layoff here for him playing in an actual football game. But that's not unlike backup quarterbacks. I mean, Sean Mannion's never thrown a touchdown pass in a regular season game. So answer me this from a pure football perspective. If Kaepernick were to get up to speed, start learning the playbook, and if he were to, to be able to play a couple preseason games to knock off the rust, who gives the Vikings a better chance to win games if Kirk Cousins goes down for six weeks with a collarbone injury? Well, Colin Kaepernick does, I think. I, I think he does for sure. Dex? Yeah, I would say Kaepernick. Because I think it's Kaepernick, too. Unless, unless he is just done, unless he can't play, um, yeah, I think it's it's Kaepernick. But I do think the most important thing is if you are going to get this right now, find a way to get to get it right that doesn't appear forced. And and putting him back on a team now it seems like, oh, my gosh, let's do this. I think the league needs to, from the very, very top, embrace what he was saying, or at least the or at least the positive parts of that. And now say to dismiss it like we did. We made a mistake because they right. did. I mean, to, to to the point you're bringing up here. Let's go look at the last seven days in Minnesota, the last seven days in Chicago, Washington, D.C., all these NFL cities that are seeing demonstrations and riots and peaceful protests as well, I think, in large part, and then little side sidecars of people that are taking it to the next level. But it's turned violent. It's turned destructive. And many of the core organizers have have tried to decry those violent actions, but ultimately the last week has been a very violent week of protests and and riots in our country. And the main question from people is, 
How does violence and destruction help get your point across? We're okay with peaceful protests, but not violence. You got to cut the violence. Why can't you do it peacefully? Well, Colin Kaepernick took a knee. I get that he took a knee during the national anthem, and a lot of people, I think, I, I don't know if like some of the stuff that he did wearing different pieces of clothing and police pig socks and right. stuff, the, the, the message got lost in translation a little bit. But ultimately, right. if we're okay with peaceful protest, taking a knee during the national anthem is doing no violence to nobody. It's certainly not burning down a store of a local business owner or a home or whatever it is like he's not he, he wasn't breaking into target and looting and stealing tvs right he took a knee before a football game to protest police brutality and so i think um when you when you compare what colin kaepernick did, i know how mad people were in the moment i know a lot of people watching this video are probably still mad because in your mind colin kaepernick disrespected the flag or the national anthem i don't think he did either one of those things i think that's maybe the perception that you have. He was protesting police brutality. But the point is, some people just don't like any form of protest if they don't see eye to eye with the protesters. And also, Colin Kaepernick's peaceful protests from five years ago look a lot better to a lot more people based on what we've seen this week. Can you imagine if, if when Kaepernick originally started his protests, if people in charge— because the National Football League is a billion, multi-billion dollar business that a lot of people care about. Can you imagine instead of dismissing him and being scared off by the president, if they had said, you know what, you got some good points here. Some of your points, they're a little bit, we're probably, they're probably losing the message, but let's iron this out. Yeah. Let, let's embrace this right now. And let's work together to basically get out because it's a league that's got a lot of black players. Let's work with them and with the entire league to get the message out in what we all consider to be a productive way. And you know what? If the president doesn't like it, that's just too bad. But we have power here because they did. And, and I don't know. I don't know that the past seven days are different if they do. But I sure would like to go back in time and see what would have happened if you had had because, you know, if football jumps on that, then probably the NBA, which is already incredibly progressive. Uh, gets even more involved, baseball perhaps. What if billionaire owners and billionaire leagues had all decided Colin Kaepernick's message is a little bit skewed, but ultimately he's right. So let's all work together to try and get this message out as positively and productively as we can. He's also no longer the figurehead. Like he is a figurehead for the movement because of everything he did in the conversation from four or five years ago. But I think he's enough in the background here, and who knows? I guess it remains to be seen. If you're an NFL team, I think you'd want some reassurances that, listen, like, definitely stand up for your causes and definitely use your platforms, your social media in the way that you're going to. But ultimately, we need you to come in here to play football. Like, this isn't – I don't think you can sign him for a publicity stunt. I think you sign him because, listen, like, dude, you're still in your prime. You can still run. You can still throw the ball 10 miles. So we need you to come in and play football 90% and 10% use your platforms for whatever the message may be. Mm -hmm. um, and I actually think, I think despite all the unrest in the state of Minnesota and despite the fact that we clearly in this state, which I love this state, we clearly have so much more to work through than, than maybe like oblivious white guy me thought a week ago. I, I, I'd be uh, not oblivious enough to, to be ignorant to the fact that there have been issues that have been boiling beneath the surface for a long time. But I think despite all of this tension, mm -hmm. I actually think the state of Minnesota would embrace Colin Kaepernick more than six months ago and more than two or three years ago. How do you guys think the state of Minnesota would react to Colin Kaepernick? It would be split. Don't get me wrong. It would be split. It's a good question. I but don't think it'd be as, um, prominent as as we would like it to be as i would like it to be i should say um i think maybe they're a little bit more accepting but i think it's still such a hot button issue that even with all the things that have unfolded in the last week i still think it, it it's marginally increases but not much it's just my gut feeling i feel like um well one i would like to say i think we'd embrace it i think that it would be great i think that we would get it and clearly the past week has shown that we a lot of us wouldn't get it okay so so I think w I knew some things about the state previously. I think we've learned more, and unfortunately, some of it's not good. Uh, I but I don't know that signing him here 
isn't going to almost lose the message in some ways, because I get what you'd be trying to do. And if you truly think that he can play, that's fine. And back to your point, would I prefer to have Colin Kaepernick after a few months of training for football again or Sean Mannion? And my answer is Kaepernick. And I believe that the Denver Broncos sniffed around Kaepernick a few years back when Kubiak was there, which means that he probably is a decent fit for what Gary Kubiak could do. Mm -hmm. But all of those things being said, I just want sports leagues, if they can help here, to do it in the right way. And I think that starts with something that scares them because it scares them because it scares their their advertisers but that's the messaging of how they're going to help now yeah and it's instead of the bottom line of the dollar it's just so hypocritical for roger goodell to come out with his stick this is what's this is what's tough for the nfl and they've 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 put themselves in this spot by their poor handling and communication throughout the years uh but the statement from roger goodell was the nfl family is greatly saddened by the tragic events across our country so again like not even really being all that specific. Uh, the protesters' reactions to these incidents reflect the pain, anger, and frustration that so many of us feel. Our deepest condolences go out to the family of George Floyd and to those who have lost loved ones, including the families of, and then he names some other families. As current events dramatically underscore, these uh, there remains much more to do as a country and as a league. These tragedies inform the NFL's commitment to our ongoing efforts. These remain... Uh, there remains an urgent need for action. We recognize the power of our platform in communities and as part of the fabric of American society. We embrace that responsibility and are committed to continuing the important work to address these systematic issues together with our players, clubs, and partners. And yet, five years ago, when a player and then multiple players were trying to raise the same awareness for the exact same issues, the NFL and the NFL owners were very much thumb on the head of players. And I think the difference between the NBA and the NFL is that the commissioner and the league owners work with the players in the NBA to create an environment and a situation where, listen, like, let's let you use this platform. Let's do it in a way that is productive and not going to overshadow the actual game in the league. And the NFL was more like, we'd rather just not dip into these waters at all whatsoever. And we want, we'd rather stifle you or hold you back in the locker room or whatever it is like, they didn't really make an effort to work with the players. And so that's what the NFL has to learn. If, or and even like individual teams, if, if the Vikings ever did bring in Colin Kaepernick or any other team, right. It, 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 you couldn't meet it with, all right, we're going to bring you in, but you better keep your mouth shut. Well, then right. It's, it's, it's got to we want to bring you in and create a plan and a platform for you to do this respectfully and in a way that clearly communicates a message and also a way that allows you to focus on football first and foremost. The first time so. that the National Football League does something that's not based on one thing and that's the bottom line and money will be the first time. It's that key. The NBA has done things that have been financially counterproductive because they allow their executives and their players to speak out. And and it can be bad for advertisers. It can be bad for the league as far as income. But they're smart enough to know that we need to allow this because a lot of times in this world, there's things that are wrong, right? You guys name me. When's the last time the National Football League did something that wasn't based on on PR and by an extension money? Because yeah. because Ray Rice was going to be punished a little bit. But then the film came out. Oh, my God, we got to he's done. Right. Adrian Peterson, we're going to handle this as a family problem. And people are like, you can't do that. Don't be a complete moron. And advertisers pulled out and they're like, oh, my God, he's suspended. Right. Name me the last time the National Football League did something that was based on actual we're doing the right thing. here. Yeah, uh, it, 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 it does seem very reactionary all the time. And it kind of feels like they just put out PR messages that. Uh, that that looks good. Yeah, people will buy that. You know, it doesn't it doesn't always feel like it's coming from a place of of genuine curiosity for how to help the cause. I I also in 2017 I spoke to some Vikings players. I remember Adam Thielen, Everson Griffin, um, even Brian Robinson, and I went around and asked them the same question: What would you think of Colin Kaepernick coming on this team? And all of them gave very candid responses of you know in the event that he would come here, we would support him. And I know Everson's, you know, a free agent. B. Rob's obviously no longer in the NFL. Thielen's still on the team. I I do think the players in that locker room would support the decision and would be a hundred percent on board. 
I, I, I really don't yeah. see a situation where a player would be so outspoken against it that he would, you know, boycott playing for the team or request a trade. I think in the locker room, those players and that culture of the Vikings, I think, would accept him. Well, and you think about this, you know, for all the faults of the NFL, the NFL has gotten a lot of things right. And locker room culture isn't always amazing, as we've seen with, like, some of the stuff that Richie Incognito has pulled. But ultimately... The NFL is the only sport where you have that many guys in a locker room. Like baseball has 25 to 30 and some coaches. The NBA has 15, 14, 15 and some coaches. Hockey has 20, some 22, whatever it is. And some coaches. Um, The NFL has 53 and a practice squad that puts it up over 60 and more coaches than like you literally have like 80 different people or more support staff and everything inside of a locker room and working together on a daily basis from different backgrounds, white, black, Hispanic. Some come from rich families. Some come from like a lot of the quarterbacks come from well-off families, right? Andrew Luck. Uh, And then you have a lot of other players who come from nothing in poverty and they ultimately all work together on a day. They don't all love each other, but they work together to, to go win. But I don't think it's players. Players aren't, aren't the overriding problem here. The problem is the business department and sponsors. Because, yeah, there, there would be some players, we've seen it, guys, that wouldn't like it. But guess what? The team would say, too bad, shut up, sit down, right? Mm-hmm. This, is, this is about two things. It's about um, the, the fear from the business side of the Vikings that sponsors would be upset and that we're, we don't, we don't want to bring attention to ourselves that we don't have to. So even if it's the right thing, that's a discussion. And the other side is, and I'm not joking, would be the coaching staff being fearful of Kaepernick being a distraction. Because for all teams say, oh, distractions, don't, they hate distractions. And they would perceive this as a distraction. Mm-hmm. So so this, to me, comes way more down to the adults in the room than the actual locker room itself. If three guys don't like Kaepernick, who cares? And you know what? Okay, they're upset. They're being paid a lot. But if you're talking about a sponsor being like, really? You're going to do that? I don't know. I don't know if we, we want to be in, it, involved. And then coach is saying, hold on a second. We're going to have you know, three times the media here for how long? Those are the things. The adults in, in the room are actually far more afraid of the reality yeah. than the players are. So it, it it does feel like if there's going to be movement on the Colin Kaepernick front, that it would be in the next year or two. And the Vikings, as we ranked last week on an episode Your best of guess, a week Phil. backup quarterback situation, my best guess on when or do you, what? Do you think that they would, that they, that the Vikings would have the intestinal fortitude to do this? Why the Vikings have the intestinal fortitude to to make big splash signings, mm-hmm. but in different ways, right? Like it's the it's it's always big splash from a football perspective. Absolutely. I don't know that they would look to pour gas on a fire. No pun intended. So I would. I mean, okay. I, I would lean toward like the odds are no, they will not sign him. And I think they like Sean Manning in the room. I think they like him as sort of a, an assistant coach, essentially in the quarterback's room. I agree with you. Um, do I think Colin Kaepernick plays in the NFL again? I do. I think he will. I think he's young enough. I think he probably has like and something might, might six or this. eight more years. I could see that now. Yeah. So I could see that. We'll see. Thanks for hanging out with us here on Purple Daily. Just uh, a crazy week here in the Twin Cities the last seven days. And we'll see what happens, not only with Colin Kaepernick and the Vikings going forward, which our guess is nothing, but it's an interesting discussion to broach. But we'll see what happens here in the state of Minnesota as well. Again, thanks for hanging out with us here on Purple Daily. For Declan, for Judd, I'm Phil.